We're so glad to be together on this Easter day as we celebrate the fact that Christ is indeed risen and alive in our midst. Pastor John Cow is one of the co-lead pastors here at Madisonville First United Methodist Church, and we are delighted to share together today in the power of the resurrection. Our gospel reading today comes from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. And as we share the Easter gospel message today, I want to invite you to stand for the reading of God's word today. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray together. Lord God, for the good news of Easter, we are thankful. For the good news, Jesus, that you are alive and present here as you have promised, we are thankful. For the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives, in our minds, in our whole beings, we are thankful today. And we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Enliven us, strengthen us, shake us up, and send us on your mission. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Matthew's Easter story begins with hints that something new is about to happen. We're told that it's the beginning of the new week, that it's after the Sabbath, the rest day, that it's dawn. And it's not just Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who are about to experience something new. It is not just them, it is the whole world. They say that two things can be counted on, right? Death and taxes. And certainly this was true in Jesus' time in the Roman Empire as well. But one of those things that they thought they could count on to always be sure, death, was to be made new that morning things were about to change and the whole world would be shook. Quite literally, the world would be shook. We are told that there is a great earthquake on that morning. Can you feel the vibrations shaking the literal foundations on which Jerusalem, the city, its buildings, its institutions, its home, its whole, everything was built upon? It's a troubling thing when the very ground beneath your feet, the solidness beneath us, starts shaking. And the earthquake is accompanied by an angel who comes down from heaven in dazzling bright, who rolls the stone away from Jesus' tomb. Now the angel is not opening the tomb so that Jesus can get out. Jesus is already risen and gone, but the angel rolls away the tomb rolls away the stone so that the women can see that he is not there, but that he has been raised. And this angel stays around as well, sits on top of the big rock. What a morning this is shaping up to be. 
Not only has the solid ground of the earth become shaky, but the angel hangs around bright as lightning and snow. The guards placed at the tomb, you know, to prevent any funny business like Jesus' disciples robbing the body and claiming a resurrection. Well, those guards, they have the living daylights scared out of them, and rightfully so. I'm going to be shook too, friends, if an angel shining like lightning appears in my face and there's an earthquake as well. Maybe you're more stable than I am and you can handle that, but I'm going to be shaken as well. But the irony is clear here. The living have been sent to guard the dead, and on this wonderful morning where everything changes, the living guards become like dead men, and the dead man they are guarding is quite wonderfully and literally alive. My Lord, what a morning. And it's onto this scene that we might be tempted to say that the women stumble that morning. But the women do not stumble upon the scene. The women go there diligently, and the scene has been made specifically so that they will see it and tell the world. The women that morning did not come expecting to see angelic beings. They did not come expecting to see knocked out guards in a vacated tomb. It is rather that they come and they see this angel. They see. They see that not only the guards will get shook up about this experience, but Mary and Mary are as well. And the first thing out of the angel's mouth by necessity is what angels always say. When they say people who are not expecting them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And if we are honest with ourselves, even though we might not see any angels clothed in bright raiment this morning, we may need to hear those words as well. Do not be afraid. Not just in the unlikely event of an angelic sighting, but any time we wake up in the morning and find that things have changed on us. You ever woken up to find that things have changed on you? Anytime the narrator going through our life might be tempted to drop in a few foreshadowing clues like setting it at dawn at the first day of the week. Anytime things change, we need to hear the words, do not be afraid. We all fear change. The unknown, the unsettling, the unseen future. We may be rock solid people but change, the unknown, can get us feeling a little shook. The biggest surprise, however, for Mary and Mary that morning is not the cosmic radiance of the angels. It's not the empty grave. It is rather who they see on the way back from the tomb. There they see and hear and touch Jesus. Jesus, whose brutal public execution they had witnessed on Friday, Jesus, whose limp and lifeless body they had seen pulled off the cross, devoid of life, Jesus, who they had wept over, whose corpse they had held, whose burial they had observed, and then to see, to touch him, talk with him alive. And even though the angel had warned them that he was alive, man, talk about something that would cause you to be shook to the core. I can't imagine. Seeing Jesus alive again meant that death no longer was for sure. It was no longer death and taxes, but life. Life and taxes don't seem so important anymore. Mary, along with the guard, believed them along with the guards. Mary, along with the cosmos, and all of us is shook. I wonder what last shook you. You know, something that so rattled you by its unexpected and life-altering reality that you were shook. 
and probably not just the metaphorically inward shook as well, but our bodies have a way of feeling that as well, don't we? When was the last time that you shook? That you shook with those moments of fear and surprise and unknown? What news from a doctor or news from a family member or news from a text message or news from the television hit you and changed your life? What was different after that moment that shook you? How did life change? Now some of the things we may think of may be bad things that surprised us and changed us, but of course both bad news and good news can shake us to the core. We can be surprised and motivated and have a new lease on life and be all shook up about it. Elvis even sang about it in his 1957 number one hit, Well, bless my soul, what's wrong with me? I'm itching like a man on a fuzzy tree. My friends say I'm acting wild as a bug. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Extraordinary love can get us all shook up too. And it is that extraordinary love that we experience at Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that is good news and shakes us up and the whole world with it. The defeat of death has meaning for us. It changes our lives personally. It gives us meaning and hope and a future. It may even cause us to do things motivated by that love and that hope and that goodness that gets those around us wondering and saying things like, bless their hearts, what's wrong with them? And they're acting wild. But the key is, is that the good news of Easter shakes up our lives, our realities, and the world, and that if hearing the good news of Easter, the truth of it, doesn't shake us up to the core and change the way we live, well, we aren't really embracing, experiencing, knowing the gravity of it all. You see, Easter... After all, in a country that is traditionally Christian like ours is, Easter runs the risk of becoming a cute holiday. And of all the holidays in our culture, cute might best describe Easter, right? Benign things like bunnies and chicks and eggs and flowers and pastel colors and fancy suits, smiling family pictures and a ham dinner around the table after that obligatory church service that you're sitting through right now. Sound familiar? But if we are to read the scripture, is Easter not more about an earthquake and lightning-like angels and soldiers shook up and women talking about the living dead? Easter is about such shocking news, good news, that we can't really face it without our lives and the life of our community being shaken up and reordered. Death is no longer the end, and that changes things. Much easier, however, much easier to think about bunnies and ham because it does not challenge us at all. We carefully avoid the fear of what might have to change about us by pretending that what is wild is really tame and cute. But for Mary, and Mary, and I pray for us, Easter gets us all shook up. Verse 8 says, So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. There is fear, but there is also joy, and there is action. First, fear. Fear of the unknown, of the unsettling, of having to change, is natural and right. We do not gain anything, however, by avoiding talk and realities that might cause us fear. Talk about death and change and transformation. We need to rather be blessed by moments of fear. Blessed by moments of fear, for often they come with bright angels who give us the message Do not be afraid that we can take to heart and be transformed. 
Easter is not a fluffy, cute holiday, but one that causes us to come face to face with our fear of death, our fear of change, our fear of the future. And when we face up to those things that cause us to have fear, we can have the great joy. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is something that is remarkably, incomprehensibly good news. It may be scary to hear messages from God and see an empty tomb and experience the earthquake, but oh, the joy. We cannot imagine better news. We are loved deeply and wonderfully by God. We are forgiven by God. We are given life everlasting on the other side of death by God. Death is no longer the end. Life does have hope and meaning and purpose. Our lives matter because of the good news of Jesus, because of the good news of Easter. When we go through the fear of things not being what we thought they were or what they thought we hoped they would be, there is this wonderful, incredible joy. Joy, joy, joy. And oh, that joy, it moves Christian people into action. Has your faith been real enough, shook you up enough to move you to action? They went with fear and great joy, and they ran. They ran. Action and movement. The Christian faith, after all, is not merely about telling yourself that you believe a certain set of things. A certain set of things, like we just affirmed, that we believe in the Apostles' Creed. It's not just saying we believe those things, but it is acting like we believe those things, right? Living like we can trust the Holy Spirit to guide us. Living like we believe that the church is holy and worthy of our attention. Living like we believe in the communion or the fellowship of the people of God. Living like we believe we've been forgiven and we ought to forgive others. Living like we believe in the resurrection of the body and that there are things that matter in this life beyond pleasing ourselves with what's left. And because we believe in life everlasting, we witness to others that they might receive good news as well. We go with fear and great joy and we run into action with good news as the people of God. In other words, we are all shook up by Easter. We are trembling in the presence of the risen Christ who gives us his Holy Spirit that we might go and run with this good news. And it's not just us as individuals that Easter has shaken up. Easter has shaken the whole world. Things are different because Jesus has risen from the dead and sent his people in fear and great joy running. The church has shaken up the world since Easter by valuing the lives of women and children and the poor in a way they weren't before. Easter has shaken up the world by making education and health care wide, widely available. Easter has shaken up the world by offering hope to the outcasts and providing hope in even the most desperate situation. Easter has dethroned the power of death in all its forms, destroying in that earthquake that was the resurrection. Now, a little earlier, I asked you, what last shook you? What news last shook you? And maybe you thought about something you didn't want to think about, right? You thought about a moment you didn't want to relive, a reality that you don't want to have to remember. But the good news of Easter is, Whatever it was, whatever news, whatever disease, whatever broken relationship, whatever hardship, whatever thing that got you questioning it all, whatever that shaking was that impacted your life, that the news of Easter, that Jesus is raised from the dead, that death and hell and brokenness and disease have all been defeated the good news, the shaking of Easter is greater and bigger than whatever last shook you, and it's able to shake it off and make all things new. Yes, the vibrations of Easter are still shaking us up. 
the kingdom of God with its peace and plenty and righteousness breaking into the broken cycles of our community and our world. The Holy Spirit is present with us, convicting us, calling us, shaking us up to new life. And may you today find the power of Easter. The risen Christ is shaking off all that sin that so easily entangles and gives you the courage and the life and the peace, the peace to run the race of faith with perseverance. May your life be dramatically different because Jesus is alive. And may that shaking in your life spill out, spill out beyond this building and be felt because it is. Jesus is alive and well, shaking up things through you, people of God called Madisonville First United Methodist Church. Jesus is shaking up lives, people coming to faith, making professions of faith because of your witness, people hearing God's call on their life to serve because of your witness, lives being transformed because of your witness. Jesus is shaking up what needs to be destroyed, hunger by you feeding children and adults weekly, despair by us providing hope to tornado survivors, shaking up sin by offering us new life in Jesus Christ, shaking up racism by our reaching across boundaries to welcome all in the name of the risen Lord. Yes, Easter is shaking things up through you in Madisonville and beyond. You are generously providing for refugees in Poland, for school children in Guatemala, and mission work around the world to plant new churches and change lives through our United Methodist Connection. Yes, that Easter, Mary was shook. The world was shook. And friends, I'm shook by it all. I won't be the same. This Easter, the ramifications of the resurrection are still shaking us up. And I pray, I pray that Easter, Easter has you all shook up too. And that with fear and great joy because of it, you will run to tell and to embody the good news that Jesus is alive. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, where there is complacency, Shake us into action. Where there is belief in ideas, but not belief in actions, send us running into action. Where there is despair, send us to proclaim the message of hope. Where there are hearts waiting to be transformed, do your mysterious, wonderful, life-giving work today, we pray, Lord Jesus. We offer ourselves into your hands, and we invite you to shake us up, that things might be different, and the world might be transformed. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing together our song of response, Up from the Grave He Arose. And I invite you, as you sing, to make it a prayer. I invite you, if God is shaking you up this morning to do something different, that you tell somebody about that. Or maybe you come and you spend some time at the altar rail in prayer. But let us be people who are shook by the events of Easter and shake the world because of it. Let's stand and sing together. Up from the grave he arose.